Hey friends, this video covers eight common self-sabotages we all engage in at some time in our lives. And most importantly, I'll give you eight hacks or more to prevent the sabotages and to rock your happiness, fulfillment, and life. First, I want to ask you to please like, share, and comment on the videos. And please also subscribe to the videos so you don't miss any of the free training. Okay. We all self-sabotage sometimes, and to some degree. The big problem arises when we make a habit of it, which, honestly, I believe most people do most of the time. But we can control this. And here are eight of the most common ways that we sabotage ourselves. And, most importantly again, for each of the eight, I will provide mindset and success strategies for limiting or absolutely destroying the self-sabotage. All right. One of the most common sabotages is beliefs. Specifically, when we don't believe in ourselves. This is a self-fulfilling prophecy. After all, why even try if you know you're going to fail, right? We're only wasting our time and setting ourselves up for frustration and disappointment. Better the disappointment of mediocrity and what we already know than the disappointment of failure. So this thinking and believing goes. So what's the mindset and success strategy to defeat this self-sabotage? First, ask yourself what beliefs you have that you, you are or will be a, fa a failure. Brainstorm into your gut tells you that you've identified all of the beliefs. And then come up with three historical incidents that prove any and all limiting beliefs you have to be false. For example, say you want to start a business, but you fear you'll fail, either because you've never started a business before, or maybe you did try and it didn't work out the first, second, or third time. Well, ask yourself, when have I tried something new and succeeded? And don't necessarily be literal. Be honest, but be creative and generous with yourself. Find times when you have succeeded at something new and something challenging. Then make the valid argument that you can and you will succeed in your business. Okay, number two. The number two way we sabotage ourselves. It's also beliefs, but this sabotage is when we don't really believe in our dream for one reason or another. The number two reason we might not believe in our dream is we've chosen someone else's dream, or we have a sloppy, poorly thought out dream. Mindset and success strategy to defeat this self-sabotage? Well, in the first instance, like I said, identify the limiting beliefs you have, and then come up with at least three historical, empirical, factual arguments that prove the limiting belief wrong. In the second case, if your dream is one that you sloppily picked up, from your family or culture, or you're being lazy maybe, or unfocused. Say, for example, you want to be a doctor because the culture or your parents say that being a doctor is a good thing. Or you're choosing your family or friend's dream for you rather than your own. Ask yourself, why do I want this? Will it bring me deep intrinsic fulfillment as opposed to extrinsic pleasure? Is there anything else that brings you more intri intrinsic fulfillment? If so, should I go after this dream or goal instead? And ask yourself, am I willing to do what it takes? Now is not necessarily the time for optimism. I'm always a proponent of optimism. In this case, though, you want to an analyze the best case scenario, the most likely, and the worst case to find out really who are you, what do you want to do, and what are the realistic ramifications, and are you willing to accept the risks? We'll get to risk in a minute. Okay, the third, third most common way we sabotage ourselves is we tend to seek negatives in life, in circumstances, in other people, in situations. Well, studies show that optimists are happier, healthier, and more successful. If you seek or tend to find negatives in situations or people, you're most likely negatively impacting many, probably all areas of your life, including risk-taking, creativity, and building relationships. Well, here's the mindset and success strategy to defeat this self-sabotage. 
First, always remain self-aware. Make it a rule to catch yourself whenever you feel or think negatively, including judgment, resentment, anger, fear, and so on. Next, don't be hard on yourself. You're human. The fact is your brain naturally seeks threats. So be compassionate, understanding, patient, and loving with yourself. But don't accept the limitation. Then if you catch yourself going negative, make it a hard and fast personal standard that you always ask yourself, what's positive about this situation or person? And come up with at least three positives to get your mind focusing on positives and not negatives. Okay, the fourth common way we sabotage ourselves. We seek and take the path of least resistance. Along with seeking threats, this is a natural tendency of our brains. This dynamic increased the probability of our species surviving over hundreds of thousands of years on the savanna as our brains developed. So again, be compassionate and understanding with yourself. Don't accept the tendency. Rise above it, but be patient and understanding with yourself. So here's the mindset and success strategy to defeat this self-sabotage. Again, first of all, maintain self-awareness. It's always so important. Identify when you're taking and seeking the path of least resistance. Next, learn to savor the exhilaration of challenge and success. The famous saying is so true. The magic happens when we move out of our comfort zone. Be comfortable, even desirous, of discomfort. Move into your fear. This truly is where the growth and the magic will happen. As long as you and others are physically and psychologically safe, that's most important, and you're living to your highest values, make moving out of your comfort zone emotionally, psychologically, pleasurable and rewarding. For great ways to do this, refer to my other YouTube videos. I offer a number of exercises that will really help you. Don't have time to go into it to keep this video within time. Each time you push through your comfort zone, create a heightened experience of pleasure, joy, pride, and power within. Celebrate, dance, be silly, congratulate yourself on slaying fear and timidity. This way you're training your conscious and your subconscious minds to associate pleasure and positivity to moving into and through your fear and discomfort. All right, here's the fifth way we sabotage ourselves, most commonly. We can no longer see the forest for the trees or the trees for the forest. Most of us take a job because it will pay better than most or all other opportunities or possibly, especially in the economy and job market we've had for the past eight years, there are no other jobs. This is it. Even if we take a job because we think it is, in fact, a stepping stone to our ultimate dream and purpose, there's often a tendency to lose the forest, the forest being our ultimate life vision. We lose sight of the forest ultimate vision for the trees, the trees being all of our many current responsibilities. What's worse, it's even more complicated. We also often lose sight of other trees, specifically the trees, the individual steps and actions we could take today to actually move us closer to our ultimate life purpose and so vision. So it's an insidious cycle of not seeing either the forest or the trees for either and both. So the, self, uh, the, the, the strategy for defeating this is visit or revisit your highest values, virtues, and life purpose and vision. Your purpose is likely to be that thing that brings you greatest intrinsic fulfillment and personal meaning, and that also serves other people. Then ask yourself, how can I live in and pursue my highest virtues, values, and vision from within my current work? Your current work may not seem to actualize or even synchronize with your ultimate purpose, passion, or mission in life, but I'd be willing to bet that you can still live in, express, and actualize your passion and purpose to a greater extent than you might currently be doing within your current work. Look for ways to do that. If your current work actually precludes actualization of your highest self, 
then find out what actually will, and then begin to move in that direction immediately. Okay, the sixth common way we sabotage ourselves. I'd be willing to bet you do this one. Studies show that virtually all of us do this to one degree or another. So what is number six? We give in to the drug of avoidance. For example, we spend an hour or more each day on average playing video games, watching TV, or internet surfing. Not research and work, just surfing. In fact, most people spend three to four hours a day doing these things. Studies show this. We do this because the immediate chemical emotional high, such as in video games or certain movies, or the numbing effect, which is most often the case with TV and internet surfing, is easier and more pleasurable to us than investing our time and energy in personal and professional development. So what's the mindset and success strategy, the hack, to defeat this self-sabotage? Well, again, I don't have time to go into this. See my online videos for, in particular one for highly actualized and successful people. In it, I give you steps that you can do to absolutely destroy any negative time-wasting habits we have and to energize, empower, and heighten success, mindset, habits, and actions. This video and all of my videos, videos, almost all of them, will be around 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, sometimes a little longer, but I want to keep them short so as not to waste your time. Okay, the seventh sabotage, fear, baby. Our brains naturally seek threats, as I've mentioned. Fear comes from what appears to be a threat to us. It's natural. The, mind, the brain looks for it. So what's the success strategy for this one? Recognize you're almost certainly naturally risk averse as a vestige of the evolution of your human brain. You and I are naturally to one degree or another cautious and fearful. It's evolution. This helped us not die out as a species over hundreds of thousands of years on the savanna. Problem is, this often works against our highest selves in modern society. Well, when you feel fear, analyze the situation for true threat. Ask yourself, what's the worst that could happen here? What's the most likely outcome? Can you live with the most likely outcome? And if the worst case is unlikely, be honest with yourself and the potential upside or the potential upside is meaningful, take the risk. Let me repeat that because it's so, so important. Take a risk. Great things always require great risk. Do you want a great life? Do you want a safe life? Look, I, either is okay. I'm not going to pass judgment. But know who you are and make decisions appropriate to your soul, not your fearful mind. Let me say that again. This is also important. Know who you are and make decisions appropriate to your soul, not your fearful mind. Okay, here's the eighth most common self-sabotage. What do you think it is? By the way, there are other self-sabotages than these eight, but the truth is most of them, perhaps all of them actually, can fit within the baskets of fear and beliefs, and fear is actually a belief, it's an, a, a, a perception. All right, the eighth common self-sabotage, indecision. Indecision most often arises out of one of two things. First, it may arise from fear, which I've already addressed above and I won't address again, or it arises from laziness. If you're lazy, I'm not your guy, and my clients, my clients are driven people. If you're lazy, it's unlikely you ever found this video, and if you're lazy and happen to find it, you're almost certainly not watching it through to this point. So anyway, those aren't the people I, I work with, and I'm sure you're not one of them. So we'll throw out laziness. And there's actually a, a third reason. What do you think that is? a lack of clarity or conviction. Perhaps you don't consciously know or stay true to your highest vision, mission, or values or purpose in life. Now here's the mindset and success strategy to, to defeat this self-sabotage. Brainstorm your highest virtues, values, and life purpose. 
People who know, trust, and are committed to these three things are highly decisive and rarely, if ever, indecisive. When we know who we are, what we're about, what is most important to us, it's always easy to act, and we're predisposed to act. Because we intuitively know what decisions are in alignment with our highest selves, and we're committed to and in synchronicity with our highest virtues, values, and vision. Then we'll always act, and quickly and decisively, on those, rather than what most people act upon, which is most often fear or the lack of clarity and conviction. All right, a few closing words. When we know ourselves, when we have clearly defined our virtues, values, and our purpose, and the vision of that purpose, when we genuinely craft self-love, not to be confused with arrogance, superiority, or bravado, but self-love and confidence, and we're in synchronized with a passion to make a difference in the world, we likely will not experience and certainly won't succumb to any of these self-sabotaging obstacles. Well, that's it for this video, friends. I'll see you in the next video, I hope. Remember, like, share, and comment. Peace positive personal power and prosperity to you, my friend.